Hey friends, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Leanne and I typically make videos on my channel about productivity, sustainability, my own lifestyle, um, but sometimes I make videos about IBS, which is why you're here today. I made a previous video about my IBS and what I eat in a day and it was both a hit and a hoot. <laughs> you should go watch it if you haven't yet. I think a lot of people felt really heard and felt that it was relatable content and that's why I'm doing this again because I feel like if I can make people feel less alone and more related to and inspired by their meals, I am here for that. I am feeling that vibe. That is what this video is here for today. <laughs> Having IBS is like really frustrating. It can make you feel really down on your luck. Like why do I have this condition? It make you feel really tired of it a lot of the time. Like it's just sometimes it's hard to keep up with and I totally get that. That's a totally valid thing to feel. It can feel like your life is just extra difficult at times, which sucks even more because we're in a global pandemic and everything just sucks in general right now. <laughs> But there are still a lot of things that you can enjoy. It just means that what you eat and how you live your lifestyle um, has kind of evolved in a different way than someone else's has. And it doesn't make it wrong or sad. It just may means that it's different and that's normal. That's life. Everybody's life is different. It absolutely does not mean that you can't handle this or can't get through this. It's very manageable once you get into it. So I hope that this video helps you out today. Personally, I love all of the recipes that I made today. I found them really delicious. I also asked on my Instagram if anybody had questions that they wanted me to answer or discuss today. So I have a few questions that I'm gonna answer throughout the video with each meal. Um, but first, I really need to say this. This is a major disclaimer. I am I am not a doctor, I am not a dietitian, I am not a nutritionist, I am not a medically trained professional. I am just a human on the internet sharing with you what I eat in a day. That does not make me an expert, it does not make me a professional in any way. We are equals. <laughs> you may know more than me, your diet may be different than mine, and that's okay. The magical thing about IBS is that it's very unique to everyone. So what works for me may not work for you. For example, I ate bananas and honey in my last video, both of which are actually high FODMAP and I didn't even think that this video was gonna go so I guess viral or popular so I didn't really clarify like to what extent certain foods are allowed but I had some people comment or question it and they were not wrong like ripe bananas and honey are high FODMAP but for me I find that I don't get affected by it I have no symptoms whatsoever but on the other hand there are some foods that are supposed to be considered safe like peanut butter is one example and I do not do good with peanut butter it really upsets my stomach it's the strangest thing and it's supposed to be safe so everybody is totally different and then to boot there is a lot of conflicting information online broccoli for example is in one of my recipes and on one source I saw that it was safe within a quarter cup of broccoli and then another source said one to two cups <laughs> those are two very different measurements and two very different things so I'm gonna say use your discretion you know your body best personally I go off of a low FODMAP list um, that my dietitian provided for me and it's from the dietitians of Canada so I think it's pretty legitimate <laughs> I'll link it below if you want to see it or take a peek at it but if I use an ingredient that doesn't settle well with you, like totally feel free to swap it with something else. Like, use your discretion. So I want to start by answering the first question that I got. I have IBS as well and would love to know about your favorite healthcare professionals. I love this question because I often am concerned that when somebody sees this video they may self-diagnose with IBS or they already are self-diagnosing with IBS, which I really discourage. It's important that you have healthcare professionals on your side because there is a chance that your symptoms aren't IBS and it's another underlying condition that is the same similar symptoms as IBS and it's really important that you get tests done to prove that it is in fact IBS. So I started off with seeing my family doctor who gave me a referral for a gastrointestinal specialist which is like a stomach specialist and their role in my journey with this was that they eliminated other issues before diagnosing me with IBS because like I mentioned uh, a lot of symptoms are similar to more severe stomach issues so it's really important that you diagnose it properly and this meant that over a series of months that I had to take different scans and different tests it was actually from a blood test through this doctor that we found out that I had a b12 deficiency which is common with IBS your intestines don't really absorb the nutrients properly so I have to take a b12 supplement and I actually have to take an iron supplement as well these are two things that are only diagnosed through a doctor and a blood test so it's very important that you see a healthcare professional in case you have a, a supplement deficiency and you need to take something 
something to help you feel better. The stomach specialist then referred me to a dietitian, and they helped me work out a low FODMAP diet plan. So FODMAP stands for fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, and polyols. That's a freaking mouthful. <laughs> Basically, they're these sugars or these like short chain carbohydrates in your foods that tend to cause gastrointestinal issues in people who have IBS. Their food isn't really absorbed quite right. Um, so following a low FODMAP diet that is low in these sugar things, <laughs> I'm not a doctor you guys if it's not clear yet. <laughs> So following a low FODMAP diet helps reduce my symptoms of IBS and many people's symptoms of IBS and I find this to be really helpful. Now this third healthcare professional is really interesting and not something I ever considered I would be seeing um, until I started seeing them and it was life changing. <laughs> I was getting severe pains right here, like my hip bone is here and it was kind of right inside here in my lower intestine. Nothing was making it go away. Um, it would get worse if I was getting like constipated and it was so painful that it would like take my breath away if I moved the wrong way. And then somebody recommended me to a pelvic floor therapist through a, a different health thing that I was going through at the time. And I was kind of like, this feels excessive, like what could they do? Uh, turns out they can work magic. <laughs> so your pelvic floor like supports a ton of stuff and it not just supports, but it's like connected to a Bunch of things. I mean, just classic body stuff, you know? <laughs> and the thing is, with IBS, typically if you have stress, it get, you, give, you get a flare up. <laughs> and if your muscles are tight because you're like stressed or anxious and you've been doing a lot of stomach clenching, I personally have a PhD in stomach clenching. I'm excellent. I'm so good at it. <laughs> Anxiety, if there was something above PhD, I'd have that too. <laughs> but you don't get to feel anxiety and stress and not have like bad effects from it. That tension lives inside of you, it lives in your body somewhere. And for me, it was my pelvic floor. I was tensing my lower abdominal area a lot. And when you're feeling a lot of these, this tension and this pressure and stress, it affects a lot of your muscles and they don't know how to unclench or, or release. So my pelvic floor specialist helped to manipulate the muscles down there and my pain is gone. I don't have any issues anymore. Everything I've mentioned so far is just like proven that specialists have changed my life. If you are not seeing specialists for this, please consider seeing one or all of the ones that I mentioned just now. Anywho, I want to talk about my breakfast. <laughs> the recipes that I made in today's video are a little bit on the more complex side. I don't always eat this complex. Sometimes I literally just eat like a BLT, that's all I want, but I wanted to give you a wide range of options and show you that you don't have to eat plain food all the time. Plus, I personally, I like cooking, I like creating food and interesting flavors, and this recipe has tons of just unique flavors and yummy, yummy stuff going on. I got it from Pickup Limes, they're a vegan blog, and they also have a YouTube channel. And I did substitute some ingredients, which I'll cover in my little spiel here. So, my first recipe is tofu scramble with fried potatoes and roasted tomatoes. I started by pressing a block of firm tofu. I did this on a clean dishcloth. While it was pressing, I prepared the potatoes by peeling them and dicing them. The recipe asks for onion powder, but since it also asks for oil to coat the hash browns, I used garlic oil for flavor and just omitted the onion powder. Garlic oil is a very good IBS trick. It's basically just garlic infused olive oil and it's totally safe for people with IBS. You can actually make it yourself. I personally buy it at Superstore. It comes in a jar and it is full of flavor and completely replaces using garlic and I still get the flavor uh, while I'm cooking. So I love using that, big recommend. For the spices, I mixed up paprika, rosemary, black pepper, and salt. Sprinkled that all over the potatoes and then tossed it to combine. And then I baked them on a tray. Halfway through baking them, I moved them over on the tray and then added some freshly washed cherry tomatoes. You're supposed to keep them on the vine for a nice presentation, but they all fell off, but it still works. They still tasted the same. <laughs> So while this was happening, I was working on the tofu scramble. I crumbled the tofu into a bowl until it looked like this. It's actually supposed to resemble eggs. It's like a vegan egg dish, even though it has no eggs because it's vegan. I added the tofu to a frying pan with some oil and I cooked it for five minutes, added the spices and then cooked it for a couple minutes more. Here's where you can see it starts to look like eggs. I chopped up some green onion. Remember, with IBS, you can have the green tops, but not the white bottoms. I put that into a bowl with mayonnaise and curry powder, and then I mixed it to combine everything. And by then, the hash browns and the tomatoes were done, so I combined everything in a little bowl for 
for myself and voila these hash browns smell so good when they're baking and the tomatoes after they're roasted have so much flavor for some reason i love it i love this recipe so much there's so much flavor and nutrition in one bowl. I will leave all of the recipe links down below as well, but just be mindful that this was a vegan recipe, not a low FODMAP recipe, and I altered it to make it low FODMAP for myself, but that is the original recipe if you wanna go take a look. She has a beautiful channel, oh my gosh, her videos are so inspiring and so delicious. Everything she makes looks so refreshing and yummy. Somebody asked, what home remedies can lessen the effects of a flare-up? Such a good question. Everybody has totally different methods of coping and they likely change on what type of IBS you have. Some people are IBS C dominant, so you're more constipated. Some people are more IBS D dominant, so you tend to be more, have more diarrhea. <laughs> and then there's some people like myself who are a mixed bag, so you're IBS C and IBS D. <laughs> It all depends on your situation, everybody's unique, but let's say it's a diarrhea kind of day. <laughs> First of all, I'm sorry that you're experiencing that kind of day. For me, the only relief I can get is by taking like Pepto if it's not that bad or Imodium if it's pretty bad. I don't have the best home remedies other than like making it stop. If I'm experiencing a constipation flare up, it's I can usually tell that it's coming. It starts to be painful. I'm getting bloated. It's usually because I'm stressed. I'm not drinking water. I didn't have fiber. I ate that donut that somebody brought to work and it was in front of me and had sprinkles on it. It looked really good. My best way of coping is with preventative measures, like not doing those things, drinking a lot of water, taking a fiber supplement every day. Like Metamucil for me works really well. Benafiber also works as well if you don't like the orange flavor of Metamucil. Everybody's different though. Some people don't do well with Metamucil and some people don't do well with Benafiber. So you have to find what works for you. Someone actually commented on the last video that psyllium husk in general without all of the additives of flavor and color and whatnot is actually fine as well and that's totally true. With Metamucil too they actually sell like these capsules and I find them so nice for if I'm traveling which obviously I haven't done in a hundred years because of COVID but you're sitting so much you're eating differently you're like always stressed about traveling so you, I often get a lot of IBS symptoms when I'm traveling and I have to take fiber but it's like I'm not gonna mix up a giant glass of Metamucil while I'm sitting at the airport or on a plane or on a bus <laughs> it's not gonna happen so <laughs> these metamucil capsules i find they're discreet they're easier to take they're more manageable to like carry with me rather than like a powder i also find if i'm getting kind of crampy down there having a heat pack sometimes helps if i'm having pain and a lot of movement too as much as you don't want to be you don't really feel like moving sometimes it just like hurts um movement does help get things moving if you're gassy uh or bloated this is the hardest one. I always find like the only thing that really makes it go away is sleeping, which is not a good <laughs> example. However, I have been experimenting with Beano. <laughs> Side note, there used to be a kid in the neighboring school who everybody called Beano. I didn't even know this guy, but I knew his name was Beano because I guess he took Beano and everybody on the hockey team made fun of him and it like spread through all the schools like wildfire, like, oh no, Beano. <laughs> And so when I bought this, I kind of had like secondhand trauma from <laughs> this kid's nickname. It's a digestive enzyme. You take it right before a meal. It personally makes me feel way less bloated. And someday if I'm traveling or if I know I'm gonna be going to like a wedding venue where I don't really have access to food that I know that I can eat and that'll feel safe eating, um, I'm gonna try this because I feel like it'll really help with the bloating situation. It only seems to help if I take it before I eat though, not after. Or if I'm already bloated, it's not gonna do anything. It has, you have to be proactive. And it really seems to work for me. And then of course the worst advice in the world, but also the best advice is to find a way to really Relax. Usually if I'm having some kind of flare-up, it's because I'm worked up about something. I know that telling people to relax when they're not feeling like relaxing is like putting out a forest fire with a garden hose, but it does make a difference because self-care is important and it's important to care for yourself. Now, what better way to care for yourself than with chicken tenders? <laughs> I couldn't think of a better segue, I'm so sorry. But seriously, this recipe is actually pretty easy. I make my own coating for the chicken tenders and I actually use the same coating for when I'm frying fish. So it's just crushed cornflakes. You can crush them with a rolling pin or a food processor or a blender. I took two chicken breasts and sliced them into strips of the same size. I coated them in a beaten egg before coating them into the cornflake mixture. And then I baked them at 450 for about six minutes, flipped them and then baked them another six to eight minutes until they were done. While they're baking, I combined a quarter cup of mayonnaise, a quarter cup of Dijon mustard, and two tablespoons of maple syrup for what might be the best dipping sauce you will ever eat. I also made some homemade french fries on the side. 
The recipe for homemade french fries is all over the internet, so I'm not gonna include that one. It's usually just a combination of oil, salt, and pepper. But overall, this is such a good, simple recipe. I don't know what it is about this coating, but it tastes really good to me. It tastes like a real chicken tender without the flour. Now, as far as a snack, I typically like to eat fruit. That is my jam. Fruit and I are BFFs. Best fruits forever. <laughs> But to be quite frank and beans, I am so sick of this pandemic that I didn't want fruit. I just wanted chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> and if you're not used to this style of baking, then it might seem a bit complex to you, but these cookies are so good, you would never think they were gluten-free. They don't taste racy, they don't leave a bitter taste in your mouth, they are ooey gooey, Chef's kiss. <laughs> but if you're not feeling it, nobody's gonna be mad at you for buying the pre-packaged gluten-free cookies from the grocery store. This is a judgment-free zone. And if somebody is mad at you for doing that, tell them I said take a hike. <laughs> so for this one, you preheat the oven to 350. You're gonna whisk together your dry ingredients, which is your white rice flour, cornstarch, brown rice flour, tapioca starch, non-fat dry milk, which is just powdered milk. I include this ingredient because I don't find that it irritates me. Potato starch, xanthan gum, salt, baking soda, sugar, and brown sugar. Then you add some butter, eggs, vanilla, and then you're gonna mix it all until it's combined up. Throw in those chocolate chips. I like lots of chocolate chips and then distribute them throughout the dough. You're gonna roll the dough into little balls and turn them into flat little disc cookies. Put them on a baking sheet about two inches apart and then put that in the freezer for about five minutes until the dough is cold. Once the oven is preheated, toss them in there. I find 12 minutes is perfect. Once they cool down, they pair very well with lactose-free milk. This is the kind that I like to use. Like, just look at this. Amazing. Somebody asked, have you ever tried reflexology for a flare-up? I've been doing it monthly and notice a difference. I have not tried it. There's a few things that people have suggested to me or things that I've been interested in trying for the sake of personal interest. Some of those things are a line, uh, CBD oil, eating only organic food. I was considering maybe making like a video series where I try these things. Each video is where I try something different. I don't know, if you'd be interested in that, maybe leave me a comment down below. And also if you have a treatment that works for you, please share it. I'd be really curious in seeing what works for you and maybe it would work for me or someone else out there. So for dinner, I tried a recipe that I saw on Milena Ciciotti's channel. I don't know if I just said her name right or not. It's a one pan salmon bake. It was the first time I tried this recipe, so I kind of goofed and added honey to the glaze, which like I mentioned earlier is fine for me, but it may not be for you. So chef's discretion is advised, ladies and germs. I would actually replace it with maple syrup next time because I think it would actually have added more flavor if it was maple syrup. I washed all the veggies, then chopped up the broccoli, sliced the zucchini, peeled and diced a butternut squash, and I also had some leftover red pepper, so I tossed that on there too. I sprinkled everything with salt and pepper and olive oil, and then I baked it at 400 until all of the veggies were done, making sure that I flipped them and removed them if they were becoming overcooked. The tomatoes were added at the last 12 to 15 minutes because they definitely burn faster than everything else. While everything is baking, you can make the glaze from the honey, mustard, garlic infused olive oil and lemon juice. Cut your salmon into strips and if you have leftovers, you can freeze them in silicone baggies like I do. And then you just smother the glaze on both sides, bake it in the oven for about 12 to 15 minutes or until your salmon is done, and then use the lemons for extra flavor, which I thought was vital because it added a lot of zest and a lot of flavor. I also made a side salad from chopped spinach, freshly washed strawberries, pecans, and green onion tops with a balsamic vinaigrette. I mix it all in the Fodi Foods container that you're seeing here. Side note, if you're looking for very quick, easy meals, like a plain pasta sauce that doesn't have onions and garlic, try Fodi Foods. They have tons of salsas and marinades and dressings and pasta sauces that are all made to be low FODMAP. Another option you might be interested in is Rachel Paul's website. She sells products that are also low FODMAP. I can't speak to them because I've not tried them myself. I have tried her recipes though. She has over 400 recipes to choose from. So that's another resource if you're looking for low FODMAP stuff and you're kind of feeling stuck on inspiration with recipes, go to her website. Anyways, back to this salad. So you basically just assemble all of that and then bam, you got yourself a tasty, fresh salad. I would actually add some feta cheese next time. I just forgot to buy it at the store, but that would make it even better. And finally, for an evening treat that is absolutely delicious on a rainy day, or when you just wanna feel calm and cozy, or you're just stressed out and you wanna have something nice, I like to make a mug of something called golden milk. I use lactose-free milk, maple syrup, almond butter, vanilla extract, cinnamon, turmeric, ginger, and a pinch of ground pepper. And you just heat that until it's steaming, not boiling or simmering, just steaming. And you're gonna pour it into your favorite mug and enjoy 
maybe with another cookie and it's gonna be the best cup of everything you've ever dreamed of. <laughs> Turmeric's supposed to be very good for inflammation. Ginger's supposed to be really good for your gastrointestinal system. I just find this drink very comforting and flavorful as well and it's just delicious so I like enjoying that. So that's what I eat in a day. If you found this video helpful or you enjoyed it or you made one of the recipes that I suggested today, I'd love it if you leave a comment down below or liked this video. That's how I know to make more content like this because I'll gladly make more if people are enjoying it. Plus, I just love reading everybody's thoughts in the comments, so that's always a special time for me. Thank you so, so much for being here. Please take care of yourselves, and we'll see you next time.